let me play among the stars let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars And good morning. Welcome to Today at the Race is presented by Fidelity First. I'm Stanton Salter along with her odds maker Keith Fustel on a nice Sunday afternoon. We have for you here at Laurel Park eight live races. We're going to have some nice weather. The rain has stopped. It's supposed to get up into the upper 50s, low 60s. So come on out here. Spend the afternoon with us. Let's catch you up on what happened yesterday. Well, let's see. Friday you had that Big payout in the Stronic Five, almost 11,000. We had another big payout yesterday in our late pick five right here mm -hmm. at Laurel Park. If you had that Charlie DeMario first-time right. gelding long shot winner yeah. in race five yesterday, that was the blow-up for us. And late pick five paid over 10,000. Yeah, right to the front. First-time gelding, reported first-time gelding. It's a horse, you know, they kind of – I, I whiffed on, no yeah. doubt about it. The horse had run Me well too. Me too. Uh, quite a while back, though, against better, led for yeah. a long way, was able to clear the field. Uh, no pressure around the turn and really widened. And 3580 was your mutual. But yeah. I tell you, uh, better that came through and hit the late pick five for, for 10,000. You had a $35 winner. Team Tim is a favorite. It's five, five and change. Huge. Yeah. Thaddeus at 1060, Confessor at 12. We like that horse. Yep. And, and you caught the first time Benny Feliciano there for us, blew in the last uh, 12 and change. So some really good handicapping, a good wager there uh, by whoever had the pick five. All right, so I'll go after the pick fives today. I have tickets for both of them. The early pick five starts in race one. That's a mandatory payout. Late pick five today will start race four on our eight-race program. Both your pick fives here at Laurel Park, your best bet with that industry-low 12%. Take out another best bet we have for you here at Laurel Park, the Champions Handicapping yeah. Tournament Saturday, March 16th, right here at Laurel Park in the sports bar. It's gorgeous up there, over 33,000 in prizes. Also, it's a qualifying uh, tournament for one of the big dances, the National Handicapping Championship, the Breeders' Cup Betting Challenge, and the big one. Go to laurelpark.com for details. Registration is now open. We always have a large t yeah. turnout for one of the more popular handicapping tournaments of the year. It is. They come in droves for that one. If you pull in off of Whiskey Bottom, and it's lined up. Yep. Don't get shut out. For your chance, you know, in this Champions Handicapping Tournament, you might be one of the lucky ones and move on to there to another big event. Today's Sunday, February 24th. February is almost over. Next weekend, we're in March, so this thing's right around the corner. Be here before you know. We're almost up to the uh, uh, the private terms. That's our next big three-year-old okay. race coming up all in right. March. All right. The, uh, the prep for the Tessio. So, all right, that's the big handicapping tournament. Go to laurelpark.com for more details. Let's get you uh, ready for today. We have a little carryover in the 20-cent rainbow pick six. That'll start race three today. There it is, a little over 1,800 for the rainbow pick six. Tim Tullock, my co-host in the afternoon, he'll have a ticket for that. Let's show you a picture of the main track. The main track's going to be a story today. We had a lot of rain here in Laurel last yeah. night. A lot of rain. It's not raining now. No rain this afternoon, but we're going to start off with a sloppy track. How do you think it's going to progress throughout the afternoon? I think we'll get uh, definitely move up to muddy. I don't know if we'll get to good. The winds are supposed to really pick up in this area. I don't know if it, it'll, it'll be a little too late uh, to kind of really help dry things out, but we're going to start sloppy. Some standing water still on this racetrack. I think we'll be muddy uh, within the first couple races. Okay. I think if, if things kind of hold status quo, they qu keep squeezing that moisture out of there. I'm um, just not sure if we'll get to good. There you go, 50s and cloudy with the winds picking up. All right, so let's get right to it here. Race one's going to kick off the popular early pick five. Mandatory payout on the early pick five with that industry low 12% takeout. I have a ticket. You should have a ticket. Everybody should take a shot here on the pick fives at Laurel Park. I have two singles here. It's a challenging early pick five. 
$32 ticket. You can study all of our tickets on the laurelpark.com website underneath the handicapping tab. Race one, I think a wide open 8,000 claimer for three-year-old fillies. I go four deep with the two, three, six, seven. Race two, uh, that's, that's a wide open maiden 10. You have to go deep in those races, two, five, six, 11 in that race. Race three, one of our features of the day, a third level allowance contest, four and up going six and a half furlongs. I single on the three, Sheik of Sheik's in there, who's gonna be a, a, a solid favored, and that horse is in very good form for trainer Lacey Gaudet. But you know what, we have an off track specialist in that yes. race, the two Eastern Bay, who's a five-time winner mm -hmm. in the off-going. He just romped last out in the mud against two other than allowance company. Eastern Bay, he just loves an off-track. I'm a little worried yeah. about him in the third. And, and expect that line to come down sure. if I could redo this line. But uh, now with the moisture in the racetrack and the way he kind of got himself back on board last time with the, with the, with the off-track, Eastern Bay going to come down off of that 12-1. to 1 morning line no doubt so i i single on the favorite in that race race three one of our features of the day going to anchor this early pick five the three shika sheiks going to be tough to beat race four that's another maiden 10 you gotta you hit the all button if you can <laughs> i go one two five eleven and then a single in the fifth race single on the uh, the uh, big scratch in the uh, the fifth oh, race, I, I like the six Adios Annie. That was my top pick. Adios Annie, she's she's history. She's going. She's scratched, mm -hmm. and so I single on the seven Majestic One for Jerry Engelhart. Vargas will ride. Let's take a look okay. here at, at the opener. Wide open, claiming eight thousand three year old fillies going a flat mile. My price play uh, of the day. Well, star designer. Well, six dollar win price. That's better than betting football games. That's you get right. Trevor McCarthy uh, aboard this Geo Ponzi filly for trainer Hammy Smith. Sharp win in the slop last mm -hmm. December against open twenty thousand claimers when she was a two year old. That was going six furlongs. She she rallied from fifteen links back in that race to get up to win by a neck at eleven to one. She beat her next out winner. She's a two time winner here at Laurel Park. She she didn't run very well last out. That was coming off what about a six week uh, layoff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now and then she wheels right back. She drops. She gets blinkers on. She gets Trevor. She gets a sloppy track. Yeah. The six-star designer, you have her on top as well. Yeah, the full sib was a three-time winner going long on the dirt. As you noted, her best figure was on a sloppy sealed surface. I think she'll be able to, with the blinkers, keep the, keep the speed in range. She shouldn't be too far back in this race and be able to follow through. I like the six-star designer. I think Boom Boom Gone's going to be the target. Uh, two, two times hitting the board out of three starts on and off track uh, with a scratch of Empire Maker. Boom Boom Gone should be towards the front. Uh, I think the two's probably going to send, though, as well. Uh, yours to keep for, for Jerry Rob. That looks like the only tactic's going to kind of get this horse into the winner circles, go to the front. But Boom Boom Gone, I think the experience going around the ground is certainly going to help her today. She can sit just off of it in, uh, if needed against this particular group. All right, I, I agree. So we have a cold 6372 Superfecta there for you in the opener. Let's turn the page. Race two, you like the early pick four today. Yeah. Starts in race two. It's a wide open maiden 10,000 claimer, three year old, seven eights. Let's check out your early pick four, see how you played it. Yeah, I'm going to spread it a little bit earlier. Two, five, six, eight, ten. You've got the nine to five favorite in race two, the two blue Danube. Uh, I. I you know, I'm not sold on this horse. The last number is awfully gaudy compared to, compared to this field. You know, when anything else is run. But off-track concerns me. The two tries on an off-track really weren't good at all. Uh, we go 2-3-6 in the third, 2-5-6-11 in race number four. I'm looking at the six maybe uh, with a 10-pound bug to get loose on the lead. You're going to have to deal with hard rock and blues. But I think the off-track might carry the six a little further at a price. Fifth race, I'm using your single there, uh, you know, Majestic One. Short field, now down to a four-horse field. Majestic One should sit just outside of Bye Bye Blues and try to edge on by late. $30, not you know, a little bit, a little on the costly side for me, but I, I, I think you've got some vulnerable choices in race two and four. Well, hopefully you can get a price home in those yeah. uh, wide open yep. maiden 10,000 claimers. That's what race two is, maiden 10, three-year-old, seven-eighths. Mm -hmm. I end up on the favorite here, the two blue Danubi, let's check out our picks here 
for race two, and we have a video spotlight to show you of my top pick, the 9-5 to five morning line favorite here in race two, the two, Blue Danube, a three-year-old son of Awesome, again, a homebred for Stronic in Corrales, David Egan, will ride today. Here's the effort late January. Yeah, in late January, off of about a four-way battle up on the front end in hand, and unfortunately has to steady a little bit early on going into the turn. Might lose a little momentum right there, a little tap of the brakes. It's going to end up going out four or five wide. And this is for 16 against a horse, Eliav, uh, who just came back out of that race to run a credible number. Ran for 25, was the beaten fave, though, but... Watch Blue Danube uh, down here, now about four or five wide coming to the eighth pole. Makes a run looming large. Looks like a winner. Flattening out, though, late. Is going to have to sustain a little bit better and improve off of the off prior off-track try stand to get it done at a short price. One thing in your favor, Corrales, a little stat. He's 9 for 22 with favorites, maiden claimers, on the dirt over the last couple of years. Pretty good stuff. Blue Danube trying to get it done today uh, for Corrales and David Egan. I go to the outside. I go to the 10. I'm the tap it now for Damon Dilladovico. This horse was kind of used inside at a mile, two races back, used hard, faded. Just a much better field last time out. You look sure. at Red Gum, a next out winner. Uh, I'm the tap it now. I like this move. It's seven furlongs. I think this horse is going to get great position and will have a uh, substantially better finish against this field today. Slight upsetter here with the 10. I'm the tap it now. I, I didn't use that horse now, but he does get a good sh chance today against this level to find his best stride and try to try to regain his top form. He ran an okay fourth from uh -huh. eight and sixteen thousand on a fast track back in November, and then uh, yeah, it, it, it went to the front going a mile two starts ago. I didn't use him. Um, let's see if you get a nice price there okay. on the 10. 7 or 2, nah, that's a decent price. Mm -hmm. uh, the 5 I use in my exacta here, Oi to the World for Hammy Smith. Jevion Toledo will ride. This horse is dead fit. Yep. couple routes in his last two tries. Now he cuts back to 7 furlongs today. I love that move. I think uh, the 5, you know, he'll be dead fit. I think Oi to the World is going to be a major factor. Yeah, yeah. And, and I should have him probably in my top four. I'll use, I'll use in exact his little saver there. Uh, underneath, you woke me up a little bit. Now, this horse finally made a little bit of a move. Now, he was kind of forced to do it when squeezed back at the break and was used wide into contention, but made a sharp little run. Okay, reserve that run today, and I think that's going to pay a little bit better dividends for the five. Oi to the world from a man, Lee Christian. I'll see him in a couple weeks, hopefully down at the Ellery Trials. All right, we both like the six real quick. Stacks to narrow a decent a debut effort against Maiden 10,000. Mild bid mm -hmm. to finish the race, mm -hmm. only beating a couple lengths. Will probably improve today. Sheldon Russell stays aboard. Mike Gerald is awfully sharp, so the, the six is live here at a decent uh, price. Uh -huh. I call that a little bit of an education in that race last right. time out. Settled back, well off the early pace. It was asked for a run about the quarter pole. Let's go ahead and work on the finish. And Stacks and Air brought a run. Had to shift in a little bit through the stretch. A little steady late in some traffic. This horse was going okay out through the wire. Uh, going to benefit from that debut run, no doubt about it. The six is going to appreciate the extra ground. Well, let's turn to page. Race three, one of our features of the day, a third-level allowance condition, optional claiming 50000 for four-year-olds and upward. We're going six-and-a-half furlongs here in race three, and this will kick off the 20-cent rainbow mm -hmm. pick six on our eight-race program. There's the carryover today, $1,840. They'll put four or five thousand new money into it today if you can be the only ticket you could have a nice six seven thousand dollar score here on a sunday afternoon tim tullock my co-host in the afternoon he has a ticket let's check it out see how he played it a very affordable 38 dollar and 40 cent play he goes uh, four deep here in race three with the two three four seven it's a tough race here uh, in the third he goes with the two and eleven uh in race four then race five, he has the, uh, that's another uh, three other than allowance race for the Philly and Mares going five and a half. He goes with the three, seven in that race. Race six, he goes three deep with the four, six, eight. And then he has a single there in race seven. That's a nice allowance yeah. race for three-year-old Philly. He's going five and a half. He singles on the two Elverson for trainer Chucky Lawrence and jockey Trevor McCarthy. I have the two Elverson on top as well in race seven. Then he goes four deep there in the finale with the two, five, six, and the nine. So you can study all our mm -hmm. tickets on the laurelpark.com website underneath the handicapping section. Let's take a look at one of the features here 
in race three. Six and a half furlongs, three other than. I go with the three, Sheik of Sheik's on top. We have a video spotlight to show you. Uh, Six-year-old gelding by discreetly mine. Here's the race from January 12th in the fire plug. Mm -hmm. This was second off of a layoff and uh, prompting the very quick Shane's Jewel. Uh, makes a bid here, top of the stretch. Actually gets a short lead coming past the eighth pole. Opens up a half, almost three parts of a length, but can't hold off, who was red hot at the time. Had his momentum stalled a little bit last out, but home run maker. Nobody was going as good as him at this point. Uh, rolls on past, but Sheik of Sheiks, no quit whatsoever uh, in that race. That was second off of a layup or th third off of that little break. Um, Going to have a target. I see this now shaping up. I think this is a lineup race, Dan. I, I think Eastern Bay, I know prompted the pace last time. Today from the inside, we'll go ahead and go. Uh, okay. I, I don't know if Sheik of Sheiks wants to get in a duel with him, so maybe just let him open up a little bit. And those two, um, I'm hoping, kind of separate themselves uh, from the field on on this off track today, Eastern Bay. Confident, widening last time. The confidence is back and got the kind of track that he needs. Yeah, comes down off the 12 to 1 line. But Sheik of Sheiks, he brings a 95 back. <laughs> he's, right. he's, he's he's a winner. He's right yeah. there. Yeah. All right, so we both had the, the Sheik on top. We both like the two Eastern Bay. He loves the off go. And I used the four Mr. Bricks for our top trainer, Claudio Gonzalez, five year old son of Flatter. Good second at this level. Last out behind the talented Miso Therm. That was late January. Runs back here in about a month. Perfect timing. Kevin Gomez back aboard. Mr. Bricks, he's he's pretty consistent. He's four for five in the money here at Laurel. Yeah. I use him in the exacto. Yeah, he's a tricky horse. He likes to kind of stalk from the outside. He's a little little bit of an in and outer and I, I'm a little concerned with him with the extra 16th of a mile today he makes that move he'll, he'll fight you but can he kind of keep on going against this group that's my biggest concern I'm looking for a little bit of a wake up from the six Irish colonel horse that I've always liked uh, last two numbers really he's gonna have to improve off of him but you go three back that was a try off a layoff that was on a good surface he, he moves up a little bit and on an off track Irish colonel I think he's gonna bring a little bit better run through the final eighth of a mile to get to peace in here. All right, so a nice feature of the day there in race three to kick off the rainbow pick six. Let's get a quick commercial break. When we come back, the late pick five paid over 10,000 yesterday, so no carryover today. But as always, that industry low 12% takeout. I have a ticket. We'll check it out right after this. Whether you're at home or at the track, have a stake in the race when you bet with ExpressBet. Sign up for an ExpressBet online betting account and receive up to a $500 sign-up bonus. Welcome back. All right, let's see if we can get another big payout in the late pick five today. Starts in race four. No carryover. Paid over 10000 yesterday. Industry low, 12%. Takeout means more money back in your pocket when you hit the pick fives here at Laurel Park. I have a $32 ticket. Let's check it out. Race four is a, a wide open maiden 10,000. Philly mares going a mile. I go four deep in that race with the one, two, five, and 11. Race five is one of our features of the day. A three other than allowance condition. Philly mares going five and a half. I have the seven on top in there that's majestic one but i also like the four lady by choice for trainer claudio gonzalez so four seven there in race five race six that's a maiden fifty thousand three year old phillies five and a half i go with the four and the eight in there race seven that's a nice allowance race three year old phillies five and a half i go four deep there with the one two four five my top pick and there's the two alverson with mccarthy aboard and then race eight, a nickel three life, four and up, five and a half. I single on my best bet of the day. That's the nine accusing. It's going to be rallying late with Weston Hamilton aboard. A good second at this level last out. I go with the nine accusing in the finale. So a $32 ticket. Mm. Let's take a look here. At the, I know McCarthy was doubled up on that yeah, race. He was, single. He, was, yeah. he, was, he was named on accusing mm -hmm. and the drowless horse. Yeah. And he went with the drowless horse, didn't he? Yeah, but oh, uh, that's a, you got to do something. You got to will it down and take your best shot. Right. Accusing's coming off of a good race. There's some speed definitely to set things up in there. Uh, and that's, that's that's a tricky little finale. But, you know, yeah. none of these horses, none of these races, you know, is there – 
I think, a slam dunk winner. Uh-uh. Well, you still, you still yeah. get a, a, a top jock in Weston Hamilton Absolutely. Uh, on that horse yep. in the finale. So we'll, we'll get to that race. Let's check out race four. Maiden claiming 10,000. Philly Mares four and up going mm -hmm. a mile. We both like the 11 on the far outside here. Hey, Mabel, the, today might be the day. She's a five-year-old maiden, 0 for 17, but she's made almost 50,000. Mm -hmm. All right, and she's she's paying the uh, the Maryland bread owner bonus That's, and the breeder yep. bonus. There, she, she's paying her way, this hard-knocking five-year-old mare. She's been knocking on the door at this level. Her last two starts going long, two good seconds. Just uh, didn't run too well in the slop back in December. She's going to have to do better today. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, John Salzman, Jr., uh, can uh, maintain that sharp form that we've seen from the last two yeah. starts here with Hay Mabel. Jorge Riaz, he was a, he had that winning ride on the DeMario horse yes, yesterday, yes, right? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But this will be a little different. This will right. be from further back right. off the pace. That one was right on the front end. Hey, Mabel, yeah, you want to maybe as an owner with the Maryland Brett bonuses and stuff, just run second. Right, just keep, sure. on keep running second. Running second. And you're going to make a nice chunk of change. But, uh, hey, Mabel, the uh, the race may just kind of come, the, you know, speed may come back to her and a race fall right into place and make the run. Yeah, I, I guess yeah, she is the one to beat, but she's 0 for 17. I got to look elsewhere. Uh, I go to the six, complicated lady. Uh, quit a little bit sooner than what I thought last time. Internals were pretty good. Uh, we're going to drop some weight. We're going to get a, a bug rider on here, and we're going to have uh, – I don't think a ton of challengers up front. The one hard rock and blues from this mile distance has got to break clean from the inside or might have to be just used too hard. And, and, and this concerns me. I think Complicated Lady has a little bit of rating gear if needed. And I'm just looking for this horse based on breeding to move up on the off track at a live price. And, and, and there you go. There's my, there's my reasoning for the, for the price. I think you're going to get 8, 10, 12 to 1 when it's all said and done. I also use Spooky Tooth, a horse that was, con you know, definitely – hampered by the wide trip every step of the way at two turns has beaten hey mabel before uh yeah. and, and go second off the claim uh, this horse is kind of just kind of a chaser and uh, and another one like hey mabel needs the race to kind of fall into its lap i i didn't uh, use your top pick uh beaten favorite twice at charlestown yep. but this mm -hmm. young 10 pound apprentice uh uh, Rosales, Victor Rosales. I, I like this guy. I got mm -hmm. some uh, sound bites from him after his uh, maiden win. What was that last weekend? Yeah. He, he's paid his dues around here. Sure. He's been an exercise rider for a long time. I think he's like 28, 29 years old. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody knows him on the backside. He's okay. a good rider. Uh, yeah, Gallister Showenthal in the morning. I, I think this kid might might, might catch on. So okay. and, and you get 10 pounds off there on the six complicated lady. So. All right, a big field there in race mm -hmm. four to kick off the late pick five. Let's turn the page here. Race five starts the late pick four. This is a nice three other than allowance feature. Philly and Mare is four and up. We're going five and a half furlongs here in the fifth race. My top pick, and we have a video. You like this horse mm -hmm. on top as well. We have a video spotlight to show you of the seven majestic one. Let's show you the win right here at Laurel Park back on November 2nd. Yeah, and I think going to get a similar type of trip today out three and four wide, stalking the pace of seven horse this day, uh, and the yellow uh, yellow silks with the green. Kind of doesn't really get phased, though, by the horse moving up to the outside. It's called in between horses. Doesn't really turn a hair. Focused, ready to go. This started some really good efforts for Majestic One. Is going to go ahead and win, drawing away uh, by three and change. Came back, trouble trip. In it two other than, follow through, got the job done out of that two other condition last time. Um, looking at this race, Bye Bye Blues, it's a short field. Bye Bye Blues, kind of like Eastern Bay. Got got what she wants today. She loves this wet track. Four for five uh, w with a third. She's the target, but Majestic One's in razor sharp form right now. I think she can dog her and get on by. Yeah, some nice Philly mares in here. Bye Bye Blues, 135. Lady by choice over two hundred thousand, mm -hmm. one twelve for Bobby Song and one sixteen for the seven majestic one. I, I I'd take any one of them. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so nice feature there in race five to kick off that late pick four. Let's turn the page here. Race six starts the final pick three of the day. Five and a half furlongs maiden claiming fifty thousand for three year old Phillies. You have the four mm -hmm. on top, and we have a stat to show you the four Suyapa. Four trainer Eduardo Rojas. Here's the start. Yeah, last three years on the dirt. Three for nine and five for nine. Second time Lasix with an ROI. There's a positive one, $2.55. So Yapa added to Lasix last time, stretched out a little bit off of a pretty good debut at Penn National where she took money, had to battle through very quick internals. Now she's going to see 216 back today out of that race. But so Yapa improved with the Lasix.
was able to prompt the issue. February 1st, we talked about, was a slower racetrack. So I'm not concerned you see 23 and 2, 47 and 3. With some other speeds in here, too, I think she can go ahead and sit a little further back if needed. I think improvement here got beat by Gallinella. A horse was dropping down out of a maiden special weight race, kind of like Bunting is doing today. Uh, Soyap, I still think, is going to be around that 3-1 to one range in this shorter field. Yeah, she'll be tough. She ran big last time. Or both races have been pretty good. Looks like she's improving. She'll mm -hmm. probably run better again yep. today. So I like the four. I use Suyapa in my exacto. But the eight bunting, I think, is going to get a real nice trip. Showed a little early mm -hmm. speed with a wide trip in debut against Maiden Special Weight back on February 10th. Victor Carrasco was aboard that day. They bet this filly by Bandbox, a Maryland bred, a home bred for Hillwood Stable and Rodney Jenkins. They bet her down about five to two mm -hmm. favored in the debut, and she finished an R8 fourth. She got a decent number, 53 by her th speed figure. Mm -hmm. Carrasco back aboard today. They A couple scratches in here, so they catch a short field. Yeah. Uh, this, this is, she shouldn't get in trouble at all. She should be able to kind of dictate her own terms on the outside with a, a solid journeyman jockey. So I go with the eight bunting on top. Yeah, you hate to, is this a quick little give up, you know, uh, going yeah, right in for, red the tag. Flag there for the He's tag. He's over yeah. seven, second out, but you know, Fifty thousand. It's a lot. It's a lot of coin. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. a lot of money. So uh, second dam. You remember her River Cruise, right? Sure. Very, very good on the off track. And talking, going back to Soyapa real quick. That that damn holy fashion, uh, one for one uh, on an off track. So yeah, I, I, I'm going to throw in the seven as well here. Wayne Potts has got a firster by McLean's Music. All they do is run well first time out. The McLean's Music, eighteen percent. A slew of winning uh, siblings. So the, the the family, everything bodes well. This is the best stallion this mare's ever gone to. So I think perfectly in tune. Uh, teaming up with Montanez, it's a good jockey-trainer combo. Uh, may may want to throw this one in because I, I, I think she's going to hold some value in here. Yeah, and comes into the race with a decent half-mile gate work February 2nd right here at Laura Park for the seven perfectly in tune so all right we like the same fillies there in race six let's turn the page race seven a nice first level allowance condition for three-year-old fillies optional claiming fifty thousand we're going five and a half furlongs and we both like the two alverson here you have her second i have her on top to a three-year-old filly by into mischief for trainer chucky lawrence a nice debut win Right here at Laurel Park, yeah. maiden special weight back in December when she was just a two-year-old. And then she came back uh, as the favorite against Allowance Company late January in a decent second mm -hmm. uh, that day. 57 buyer speed figure. Knockout kid uh, was uh, third in that race. Two dozen roses. That's a, a nice filly for uh, Pletcher, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so, yes. he, so McCarthy stays aboard today. Chucky Lawrence puts the blinkers on. Uh, so I, I have the two Elverson on top here. Nice uh, filly uh, in a nice allowance race here. Yeah, we'll have the target maybe of Ying Yu again who moves to the outside. It's speed with the blinkers on. Well, Elverson kind of try to go on the attack early. It'd be interesting to see because, you know, she got softened up a little bit having to do the chasing in, in, right. in that race. So. Uh, Elverson certainly going to draw a lot of play. A good stat there for the Blinkers, uh, for the trainer, Chucky Lawrence. If the sun shines in good form, uh, pass perfect. A little slower side, but I like the determined run last time. Knockout kid always brings a run. The long dart adds flow. I go for a price here, though, the six. G's Warrior. I, I might have this horse lined a little too high at 12, but um, seeing how all these other horses seem to get play, maybe she falls through the cracks. Numbers aren't really great. You know, you, know, you see a 23 buyer back at Pimlico in the spring, but closed up nicely on an off track. Comes back, beats some key horses, Stan. Beats Helen. Beats Belial uh, with a grinding kind of run at five yeah. furlongs. Jerry Robb could get these horses. Going back through the stats, horses, uh, you know, the three-year-olds off of a long break, you know, from that spring season, you know, as a two-year-old. They've, they've done some improvement. This horse here is running against the right kind. Um, I, I'm going for a price. Geez, Warrior. Yeah, she beat Belial. Beat right that was the Cal yep. Lynch filly that yeah. went on to win an allowance race. Was, was stakes, stakes place. Stakes place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. All right. And you'll, you'll get a decent price here on this Jerry Robb uh, uh, filly. So, all right, the 6 G's Warrior mm -hmm. going to be a, a decent price. Nice allowance race here. Yep. The 5 Lawn Doll. Da, da, you don't use the 5. No. I have the 5 in the mix here. Well, Cla first off the claim for Claudio. That was enough for me. He's okay. got a big <laughs> stat. First off the claim, yeah. Katie Davis will ride this uh, filly by Artie Schiller. Has speed, good outside post. Uh, mm -hmm. She should be right there, I think, yeah. against this group. Yeah, she's going to feel the heat there, no doubt. She, I don't think she's she's step quick. Up, is she as up. quick as this outside horse and maybe Elverson with the blinkers? But uh, if anybody can get them to go up, it's Claudio. All right, let's mm -hmm. turn the page here. Race eight, 
I have my best bet of the day here in race eight. I, I, I normally look for, for, for higher caliber races to have mm -hmm. my best bet. This is a, a never won three lifetime race, claiming 5,000, four and up, going five and a half furlongs. But uh, I'll get a decent price here on my top pick. Best bet of the day, the nine accusing, five to two. I'll take it. Now, Trevor McCarthy was named on the nine accusing and also the six Lord of Miss rule for mm -hmm. Juralis. He goes with the six. We still get a top rider here with Weston Hamilton on the nine, accusing, rallied from uh, the back of the pack, last out at this level, going six furlongs and just missed, just got beat a neck. Let's see if they can maybe go a little faster mm -hmm. earlier today, going five and a half, set it up for a closer. Mm -hmm. Let's see if the nine, accusing, can just come flying late mm -hmm. and get him on the wire. Yeah, we liked him last time on the turn back swing step and was able to get the outside and get a clear run, was just a little bit better uh, that afternoon. I, I, I like the six, Lord of Misrule. I know proven uh, on and off surface. I don't really get what happened last time. I didn't get a chance to go back that video. I, don't, I didn't expect that horse to be that far back. Was breaking from the inside, sometimes might have got shuffled a little bit and made a move. McCarthy with the choice kind of put me over the top. Uh, and there is certainly speed to target in the nightcap with the two. Patriotic West is now showing in through speed. Uh, Serato be fairly close. Flankenstein puts on the blinkers, okay, likes to go to the front. Even Kuka Warrior, uh, a little freshening off of that race up at Parks against a little bit better. He's going to be part of this pace flow. You know, your horse accusing is going to be running into it, Stan, and, and the six Lord of Misrule. They look like the legitimate closing types in here. Uh, maybe a little bit of a price. The one ticker tape parade has run better uh, recently. Three races back on a sloppy sealed surface, shortening up to the five and a half. Uh, would maybe prefer Montanez might know this horse a little bit better, but Chaffee's going to work. Uh, this horse used too hard and was too close last time. Gets a chance to relax a little bit early and make a better run into this field today and holds holds good value in the nightcap. i got to find out this guy, Michael Sandoval, yeah, the I don't trainer know that took right. over for Mario mm -hmm. Ray. Is that Gaston Sandoval's son? That I don't. I remember old Gaston Sandoval had he some good turf horses oh, back in the day. Good on yeah, the turf. yes, Gaston he was. Yep. Ni mm -hmm. Nice, uh, nice old, old gentleman. I think, yes. I think we've lost him. Uh, we'll find out if uh, Michael is his son. All right, that's okay. it. Big nine horse field in the finale. Good luck in all your will pays going into race eight today. That's our final race. Uh, Dave Robbins coming up next with scratches and changes. Good luck. Good luck.